Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat, baby! You having fun? Nice tailfish on a white buck tail jig. Look at him like that. Alright folks, welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Planner Trolling. In this episode, we're going to go over all the basics and the fundamentals that you need to get to become comfortable and proficient at planer trolling. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab us an angler, and just see some great exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay folks, so like I said, the beginner's guide to planer trolling. So what we gotta understand first is exactly what planer trolling is. So this apparatus right here is a planer. What it does is it helps you fish down in the water column instead of just up on top when you are trolling. A planer can get you down anywhere from 10 feet down to well over 100 feet depending upon the size that you use. The bigger the planer, the deeper you will go. Now I understand that planer trolling can be kind of intimidating. A lot of folks say, no, I don't want to do it. It's too much to get into. It's too involved. I'd rather just throw some lines out and get up and rolling. Trust me when I say if you are into trolling, you are going to definitely want to have the tactic of trolling a planer in your arsenal. It is going to get you into the bite with fish that you may otherwise struggle to get the hook up with. Planer trolling will catch you a multitude of fish. One of the most popular fish to get into the hookup with is wahoo. You will also catch fish like king mackerel. You're also gonna get into the hookup with the tunas. And periodically you will get hooked up into a sailfish with them. Planer trolling is typically done over the deep ledge of the reefs. However, it's always good practice to have at least one out when you are heading way offshore looking for fish like mahi-mahi. All right, so when we're planer trolling, one of the most important aspects of it is you need to use braid as your main line. You can use mono as your main line, but it's going to give you an inconsistent troll. And on top of your braid being on your line, you're going to need a heavier conventional reel like a Penn International 30 or a Shimano TLD 30 or a 50. You need these bigger reels because they one, can hold the line capacity, and two, they can raise the tension on the drag setting that is tight enough so that the planer is not going to pull out line once it is set. And along with that, you'll need a more heavy duty rod. You can use 50 to 80 pound class rods, they're great. You can go a little heavier. Me personally, I like the lighter side because it bends over and it gives you shock absorbency from when that fish hits. It lets the fish pull against your rod and retracts and sets that hook. There are a couple of different ways to troll a planer. The one I'm gonna to touch on briefly at first is using an instrument like this. This is called a yo-yo. What you do if you use the yo-yo is you're gonna put your leader on it. Your leader from your planer to your lure needs to be at least 75 feet. I use 100 feet. If you don't have a long leader, this big clunky apparatus here, the planer is gonna spook your fish. You'll never get hits. That 100 foot leader I like to use is 80 pound leader material. So when we're using the yo-yo, we are going to put that 100 foot leader on our yo-yo. So when you put that leader on your yo-yo, you're gonna put on 300 pound ball bearing swivels on either end of it. And at the end of your braid on your main line, you will also put 300 pound ball bearing swivel. You are going to hook your main line, your braid, onto this little ring right here that is on what's called the arm. Then you will hook on the first swivel of your leader onto your plate. Your second swivel on the end of your leader will then hook on to your lure. And typically I like to use lures like these. These are called strip bait lures. It is a combination of a sea witch, a little lure called a flash witch, and a couple of double 80 hooks. And then we're gonna hook on a bonita strip to them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our boat up to speed. We're gonna let our leader off our yo-yo. Then we will let the planer out. Now when we're letting out, we don't have to let out hundreds of feet because we already have a 100 foot leader. You only need to let out about 100 to 150 feet of main line, and then you will set your planer, 
and you'll get up and trolling until you get into the hookup. And that's more of an old school method of planter trolling. The issue I have with it is when you get into the hookup and you wind up to your planer, you all of a sudden have to hand line in 100 feet of leader with a sometimes massive fish on it. And now when we're hand lining in, we're not gonna just let our line dump onto our boat, we're gonna let it loop out back behind our boat, all 100 feet of it. And real quick, what I'm gonna do is take you offshore and show you what it's like to do a little bit of the older version, getting your planer out, getting it set, and then getting it into hookup and hand lining in a fish. So we're laying about 200 feet, we're gonna toss the floor off, get in the way for the floor. So we're up and rolling. We got our planer set on the Penn International 30. Number six planer with pink iridescent sea witch and a pink trolling squid. All right, so we're right at about 300 feet. We're gonna stay in this general vicinity. See if we can get into the bite. There we go. There we go. Good fish. some good old-fashioned fish and fun nice big fat wahoo on the planer hand lining it in you got to be careful the fish takes a run you got to know when to let to give them some slack also how to set that planer that's an older version of it where you put your boat in idle you let your reel and free spool until your planer dips down and it gets set and then you get rolling and you will see your rod bend over and that's how you know your planer is set all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you out on a boat and I'm gonna show you a more simplified way to set a plane. All right, so we've let out enough of our main line. Now we're gonna lock it up. All right, now, got a planer. Very simple, all you do is you pull back on your main line and you let it go. And there you go, you're up patrolling, the planer is set. You're golden, put your click on, you're ready, you're done. 
Now we're gonna move on to the version of planar trolling that I much more prefer. And there's a couple of ways to address it. It can be either called a quick release planer, it can be called a bridal planer, or it can be called a removable planer. They're all the same. The great thing about it is once you're winding up and you're hooked onto a fish, you literally remove the planer from your line and you keep winding all the way up, keeping that tension, the anglers on the reel, and it's much more effective productive and you lose a lot less fish doing it this way. So when I'm talking about a removable planer, I'm talking about something that looks like this. It has two open end swivels on either end of it so that we can hook it onto what is called a bridle. This is a bridle. It is simply 200 pound test braid tied with two 150 pound swivels on either end of it. Now you ask yourself, hey, when I'm winding up, will these go through my guides? Yes, they will. You just need to make sure you have the right rod with the right size guides. All right, so like I said, the removable planer. When we're winding up and we get to the planer, we simply detach it with these clips and the angler who is on the reel keeps winding up. Now when we're talking about using a bridle, we're gonna attach our bridle straight to our main line. And then on the other end of our bridle, we are going to attach our 100 foot leader. And we're going to wind that all on. This is called a wind on leader, if you've ever heard that term. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna show you how to make a quick release planer, a removable planer. And at the same time, we're gonna show you how to tie a bridle right the first time with Palomar knots and get it the exact same length as your planer that you need it to be. All right, so to make a Quick release planer is very simple. This is a size six planer. What you're also gonna need is this. This is a 300 pound double barrel swivel. So to make a quick release planer is fairly simple. You just hook one end on to your planer and you take the other one and you're gonna put that through the eye of the plate. You're good to go. That is a quick release planer. So let's say you also want to use a smaller planer. This is fine. The only thing you have to remember is that when you make your bridle, you are going to want it to be as large as your largest size planer. So what we effectively have to do is we have to make the two ends of all of our connecting hardware the same length. Put on my first double-sided swivel, put one on the plate. What I notice is that it's too short by about an inch or so. What I have to do is I have to extend this hardware somehow. So what I've got is just a coast lock snap of a barrel swivel that I've clipped off. Hook that onto the plate and then we will hook our double barrel swivel onto that. Now we have two planers that are pretty much the exact same size. So now this smaller planer will be compatible with your bridle, whether it's working for the larger planer or the smaller. All right, so there you have it. Now we have a size four, six planer and a size six planer, and they are technically the same size from tip to tip. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to tie a bridle properly and attach it to your main line and your leader. We're going to make our bridle with braid. This happens to be 200 pound braid. The first thing we will do to make this bridle is we are going to tie a Palomar knot around one of our swivel. Feed that through there. Palomar knot is very simple. You take your loop, you tie it around, Pull it through, stick your hardware through that loop, pull it down, and pull that loop on top. I grab a pair of pliers, hold on to the barrel of the swivel, and you just cinch it down. Now we'll take a knife, we're going to trim up our tag of our Palomar knot, good to go. The next step is we have to figure out how long it is. So what you want to do is you're going to want to hook up the first side onto your swivel where your knot is. We're going to extend our planer as if it has been tripped and we'll pinch right at the very end here on this end. And now we will take right here at this pinch point and we are going to make a loop right there. We're just gonna tie another Palomar knot. Pull it down. We will trim up our tag. 
we will hook one end of our quick release planer on and then we will hook the other one on and we will make sure when we pull it tight the planer is tripped and it is so the next step is, is we want to make this a permanent part of our setup for our fishing so what we have here is our 80 pound braid that is our main line on our fishing rig. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a loop in our main line, send it through one of the swivels on the bridle. Make an overhand knot. Go through one time. I am going to go through a double time. To tie the Palomar knot, we have to send our whole bridle through that this pulling tightening loop. So we pull that through there. Come on. And just make sure that we are pulled real tight on both our tag and our main line. Now our bridle is attached to our main line. And our next and final step is to attach our leader. And I do that with a simple clinch knot, basic clinch knot. Send it through there. And I'm gonna give it one, two, three, four, five, six wraps send it back through my little pinch point loop right there we'll grab our pliers and we will cinch down and there you have it trim up your tag all right so that's not too bad to make a bridle and attach it to your main line and your leader if you follow those steps you'll get it right the first time and you won't be guessing as to how long to make your bridle all right and now i want to talk a little bit about the lures that i like to use for planer trolling my favorite lures for planer trolling are strip bait lures like i said they're lures that are called sea witches i like to trail them with another lure called a flash witch and i like to use double 80 hooks to hook up a bonita strip when i'm trolling a bonita strip just adds some flavor and a little bit of a wiggly tail makes it look more like a fish when you're trolling. So when I tip my lures with Bonita strips, I don't get real fancy. I just hook them straight onto the hooks. I plan out where my trailer hook will fall, sink that through the meat, and then I take my lead hook, square it up, and send it right through what would be the front of your strip. And then we're hooked up, and our lure is good, set, and ready to go. These are my two favorite types of sea witches to use. I like a pink and white and a blue and white. And so when we're planer trolling, we're typically gonna run into toothy creatures, wahoos and kingfish. So I like to use wire leader. This is 40 pound wire leader. What we're gonna do is we're gonna crimp on our lure. We're gonna eliminate the swivel by using a solid ring at the end of our wire leader. That's gonna give you a little bit more of the stealth factor and eliminate one piece of hardware. So what we're gonna be trolling with is a planer setup. And this is a Penn International 30TW. It's on an Ocean Master rod, seven foot rod with all roller guides. It's spooled with 80 pound braid and then we've got 100 feet of 80 pound leader material, monofilament leader material as our leader and it's got a bridle system set up which means we have a removable planer so we're letting our planer out so when i show people how to planer troll i really do try to get them into using a bridle system all right abby hold this and the bridle just makes it so you can put your planer on and remove it, it makes it funner for the angler also so that you know, they can reel the fish all the way up to the boat when they're fighting it and it doesn't have to be a mate or a captain or someone experienced in hand lighting fish. All right. So we're going to let that out about 100, 125 feet. All right. We're gonna pick up our speed a little bit. Like I said, we wanna do between seven and eight miles an hour. All right, there you go, buddy, pick it up. Got it, Fill it in. We got a fish. Fish layers on the fish. Put them right in around 90 feet. Take this Have fun, buddy? Yes. All right, there we go. show you the beauty of this removable planer here why it's important to have a bridle that way your 
you know, your angler can have some fun fishing. There we go. Get up to a bridle. King mackerel on the planer. And that is how that works from setting that planer easily and getting into the hookup. Now we're going to get a little bit more involved. What we're going to do is we're going to troll two planers at one time. It's rather simple to do, but there's a few rules we got to follow. The first most important rule is you've got to use two different size planers, a smaller one and a bigger one. The smaller planer you are going to let out further the bigger planer you will keep in closer so the way i like to do this is i like to let out my smaller planer first once i get past my leader i will hook up my planer and i will let out about 200 to 250 feet of line do not set your planer yet let it just troll then we will let out our larger planer only about 100 feet to maybe 125 feet. And now once we've got them let out, the next thing we could do is we will set the larger of the two, the closer planer first, get that diving down, and then we will set our smaller planer. And now the cool thing about it is once you get a consistent hookup on either of the planers, you can eliminate the other one because you found the depth at where the fish are biting. All right, so now we're gonna head back out on the boat now I'm going to show you how to troll two planers at one time. We're going to let our shorter, our smaller planer out first. So here's how you use a bridle system. If you hook the plate end of your planer on your leader end of your setup, and then the arm goes closer towards the main line. Now we're going to repeat the process for our short planer, which is the bigger of the two. We'll turn into our line that's already set out. And we're going to let this planer line head out about half the distance of that one. You want to set your longer planer first. So to do that, you just pull back on it, let it go, and it's set. Now we'll set the smaller of the two planers to the same thing. So if you look at the contour lines on the GPS, we're heading over a sort of deeper ledge of the reef. Hopefully we'll run into someone who's willing to uh, bite. All right, hold on, hold on. Keep going, we're gonna keep going. All right, big guy, we're hooked up, we're hooked up. Get your belt on, get your belt on. That's a good fish right there. All right. All right, there we go. Put it in there. All right. All right, real. So we got hooked up on the shorter, deeper planer. Took a nice, solid run. This is a good fish out here. There you go, nice and slow, big guy. Pull back and reel on the way down. There you go. Hooked this guy right in about 150 feet of water. So before when I would fish with Abby with the planer, he would get to the planer and I would have to take it off and hand line it in. This is because of the trickiness of hand lining and wrangling a fish. Now this time, I'm gonna remove this planer and Abby's gonna get to have the fun all the way up to the boat. What I need to do is walk back a little bit. Don't trip, don't trip. All right, keep winding up, buddy. There we go, all right. Now I'm gonna take off the planer. All right. planer and you let your guy go so the fish is about a hundred feet away coming on in all right we're gonna see we're about ready to see what we got going on here Getting up to the boat. nice and slow see a good fish good fish all right walk back a little bit all right on that 
my god. Holy moly. All right. Right there, missing that tail at the end. Okay, so we're up and back and at it. We had the right color, we had the right depth, and the bait was the Bonita strip. So we're not gonna change nothing. We're gonna give it another go around. We know where they're at. We're in about 170 feet of water. We're heading back into about a buck 50, right where we got that hit. And so this is all about process of elimination when trolling multiple planers. Abby, you want to come get this fish? Right around 155 feet of water this time. All right, there you go. Put that in there. All right, take him up. Yep. Not a hit on a planer, not another monster, but it's fish. He's tight. He's tugging. So, see what happens. Get him up to the boat and uh, find out if it's our target species, which is some sort of toothy critter. All right, buddy. How you doing? You having fun? Yeah. All right. Slow. Yep. Take it slow. Take it nice and slow. Abby gets to fight this fish all the way to the boat. It doesn't take out any of the fun for the angler. Leaves the captain in charge, getting the fish on the boat. All right, not too far away. Let's see what we got going on. Here comes our fish. Let's see what we got. Look like ah, tail there about the kingfish. Tell the king mackerel. All right, buddy, put your rod down. Another nice fish, look at that. Two kings in the boat. All right, and there you go. Nice couple of fantastic bites. Giant kingfish that got attacked by a shark, and then we got another solid hit. Had a great day. And so this just shows you how effective planer trolling is. And in closing, once you get the hang of planer trolling, it's going to become second nature. All of a sudden, you're going to find out that you have at least one planer in the water all the time, no matter where you're trolling. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit in this beginner's guide to planter trolling. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.